What's up, NASCAR Authentics fans? David Land here, and I am bringing you a full unboxing and review of Wave 4 of Lionel's NASCAR Authentics line. This is the first time we've gotten 2016 cars in the main uh, line of Lionel NASCAR Authentics, though we did get the Batman and Superman cars just a couple days before we got these. At least I did. Some people found these before they found the Batman and Super Superman cars and vice versa. So, can we say they came out at the same time? So yeah, we've gotten the first 2016 cars, and we finally got a Toyota. So, immediately, right off the bat, they've solved the two biggest issues I had uh, with the first three waves. So, you guys know I'm very excited to get into this and take a look at these six cars. So, let's not put it off any farther. This is David Land on YouTube, and this is Way 4 of Lionel's NASCAR Authentics. So the first car in the wave we're going to take a look at is Jimmy Johnson's 2016 Lowe's car. And you're going to notice right off the bat the major difference between the 2015 cars that we got from Lionel and the 2016 cars is the little insert here. We be I believe this is a magnet, but we'll double check on it, but it's definitely interesting there. Um, not the first Jimmy Johnson car we've gotten in the Lionel NASCAR Authentics, and obviously there's the full wave. This will be the first and only time I show you the back of the box. Possibly I'll show you it for the Toyota because I think there's some different legality stuff back there. But yeah, um, again, big props to Lionel for putting the entire wave on the back of the box. That's going to help everybody out. Um, and let me tell you, this packaging starting to grow on me. So let's take Jimmy out of his cardboard prison and start this review. So yes, indeed, that is a magnet, and that's going to be really cool. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. But obviously, the star of the show is the die cast, and here it is. Let's go in for a close-up. So here is Jimmy Johnson's 2016 Lowe's car out of its box. Definitely into this scheme and uh, for a couple reasons and I'll show you that in just a second um, but this car definitely I think pops more than last year's car did um, the blue is a bit brighter um, and usually that helps the look of the car I don't know how accurate that is I don't know how much they changed the scheme between 2015 and 2016 obviously the actual like livery where the uh, decals are has not changed but it seems like they've lightened the blue up and I'll show you an example of it in just a second um, in, in terms of my theory on that but yeah Pretty classic Lowe's design here. Uh, it's got the gray, the white, and the blue. So definitely classic. Uh, I wish they would go with the yellow numbers, but I think for this scheme, the white numbers probably work the best. But yeah, um, definitely a good start to this wave. Definitely no complaints as of yet. We'll take a closer look at it here in just a second. But here's uh, the, new, uh, the new stuff for 2016 Wave 4. You get this little pit signboard. Um, for Jimmy Johnson and all the 2016 cars you see the holes are punched in there so that it doesn't like the wind doesn't catch it while it's sitting there on pit lane and yes this is a magnet um, so it'll be interesting see, to see how many 2016 cars we get and if we get a significant number of these uh, maybe I'll do a new background uh, with all these uh, cool number plates because they're kind of kind of neat they're a lot smaller than the magnets we've gotten previously from Lionel's NASCAR Authentics but um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of use for the magnets as of yet to begin with. So let's take a closer look at Jimmy Johnson's Lowe's car. Uh, take in some of the details here. Um, a nice looking car. It's hard to comment on a car that doesn't change all that much. The big difference that I'm noticing, you get a white splitter, um, is the color, which is a lighter blue than we've gotten previously on Jimmy Johnson cars, at least in the recent past. This kind of reminds me of like his 2006 scheme, somewhere around that era, um, back on the old uh, Gen 4 car, um, back when Jimmy Johnson just started in NASCAR. I believe this car won at Las Vegas, I want to say, uh, this year. Yeah, I think it was Las Vegas. Come on, David, you're smarter than that. But yeah, 
Um, that is Jimmy Johnson's 2016 car up close. Nothing to um, to complain about. So Lionel did a great job representing the diecast. But this is what I was talking about. Um, this is Spin Master's release. I know f some of you are going to go, well, it's Spin Master, of course it's inaccurate. But I don't know. Um, some of you guys who are bigger Jimmy Johnson fans than I uh, will be able to tell me whether um, whether both of these are accurate or, accurate or not. But yeah, this is definitely a darker blue here. Spin Master chose to go with versus Lionel going with a much lighter blue. Which one's more correct? Or is one of them actually wrong? Or are they both correct? I don't know. Uh, obviously, the schemes change just a little bit. You can see the, uh, the spoiler in the back has gone from silver to black. So it's possible they just changed the uh, scheme around, but I thought it was worth noting because I was like, wow, uh, Jimmy Johnson's scheme look, uh, looks really refreshing this year. And that's what it is. They lightened the blue. So uh, definitely um, a nice start. Uh, hopefully we can continue that trend as we move on to the next car in the wave. So the second 2016 car we're taking a look at is actually of a driver who has not participated in 2016 yet. This is the Tony Stewart Mobile One 2016 car. Um, this car has been piloted by Brian Vickers, um, most notably in the Daytona 500 where he crashed a whole lot during speed weeks. Um, yeah, uh, Tony Stewart uh, obviously was injured in that uh, um, off-road buggy incident like you do. Um, this is also his last season, so I don't fault Lionel for putting this car in Wave 4. Obviously, probably Tony Stewart cars are going to be selling uh, better than they were last year for the obvious reasons of his imminent retirement from NASCAR, though I doubt he's going to retire completely from racing. So, let's get Old Smoke out, Old Smoke, and get to the review. Obviously, we get another one of these magnets, and I'm already going to say this is probably my favorite of the bunch for a few reasons that I'll get into in just a second. And here is the Mobile One car for 2016. Let's go in for a closer look. So here is the 2016 Mobile One car out of its box. Have to say, definitely like this scheme. Um, maybe it's a little bit plain, but uh, I'm willing to let it pass. I definitely like the, uh, the wings, the Pegasus wings uh, that they've incorporated. That's uh, been a mobile... Uh, trademark, uh, something they've used for their brand since, you know, they began. So it's definitely nice to see them incorporate that into this car. Though I do, now looking at it, I wonder how much better it would look if they got rid of the red and just had that little blue stripe on there. I don't know, that's a more of a paint scheme review than a die cast review, but, you know, give my total thoughts on the car. Definitely we've got tic-tac-toe three in a row with the Mobile One, Mobile One, Mobile One, Mobile One there. Um, that's kind of funny. Um, definitely a Mobile One bought and paid for a car, that is for sure. Lots and lots of, um, of Mobile One stickers on this car. Um, but it looks good, I think it looks pretty good and Lionel did a good job of representing it in diecast form and obviously people are going to be after this one because it is uh, Tony Stewart's, one of Tony Stewart's last cars. I would assume eventually he will get in this car and race it. So that is the view of it. Let's take a look at this uh, signboard here. And I will say, I think this is one of my favorites they've done um, in terms of magnets and in terms of these new signboards here. Um, I like how the mobile one comes across the top. I like how the wing is incorporated in the 14. I don't know how accurate these are. That goes for the lows too. I don't think they're all that accurate. I think these are probably Lionel designed, but uh, they might use them. Usually they have like neon colors though. Um, if they do a Kevin Harvick, they definitely need to like put the happy face on there. But yeah, and, the, and there's nothing on the back, David. Come on, you're better than that. But let's take a closer look at the die cast, see if we can't find any um, blemishes or any other notable things that we need to talk about. Um, there is the front of the car closer up. Blue splitter on this car, so that's pretty interesting. Um, go around, so you've got the blue that goes across. I actually like that part of the design a little bit better than the, than the red Pegasus wings. Um, I think that works better with the, the white, the predominantly white car. But yeah, it's a pretty good um, choice. I think it's uh, nice, and technically it's a backmarker team because uh, obviously 
Tony is not quite, or um, his replacements just aren't quite as fast as Tony, even though Tony's kind of been uh, slacking a bit recently uh, in NASCAR competition. Um, I think that's because he just doesn't get along well with the Gen 6 cars for whatever reason. What's that little logo right there on the uh, deck lid? Cannot tell. Somebody let me know what that is. Um, but this car actually did remind me of something. Uh, something we got um, more recently in the Lionel NASCAR Authentics. I thought there was, these schemes were going to be a lot more similar than they were, but I dug it out of the box, so let's take a look at them next to each other anyway. I believe we got this car in Wave 2. This is the Americana um, Tony Stewart car. The notable thing about this one is that it was canceled by Lionel earlier in the year. And uh, I guess this is where my deja vu was kicking in. The cars are virtually identical on the top of the car, as you can see. Um, so yeah, um, but we're not probably going to see these two cars um, on the shelves together. Um, this one's not really peg warming, obviously, because it was um, canceled. And uh, I guess, you know, the, um, the Gold Series people are after that one as well to fill out their 2015 collections. So uh, what do you think of the uh, Tony Stewart 2016 car? Uh, let me know in the comments if you're wanting to pick this one up. And let's move on to the next car in the wave. Continuing on with this wave's theme, apparent theme, of cars that crashed at Daytona, we've got Danica Patrick's Nature's Bakery number 10 uh, for Stuart Haas Racing. Uh, good to see Danica Patrick uh, finally get a die cast in the NASCAR Authentics from Lionel. And this is fairly welcome because it's a new scheme. I believe a new sponsor for this year. I don't know if this ran in races last year. It may have. I know they announced it last year, but, you know, some of these paint schemes all run together after a while. But I do like the light blue. So let's take a look at it. If I can crack it open. There's your signboard. And there is your die cast. Let's take a closer look at Danica's new ride. So here is the Nature's Bakery's car, Nature's Bakery car out of its box. It's not plural or possessive. Uh, but yeah, the Nature's Bakery car out of its box. Fairly interesting scheme. I am a fan of this uh, color scheme, I guess you could say, the robin's egg blue, or maybe baby blue, I don't know. Depending on uh, your opinion of Danica, I guess your, your mileage may vary on what specific color of blue you uh, decide that this car is, but it's fairly interesting. It's a color we don't usually see on NASCARs or race cars in general, so uh, it's welcome for me because it gives some variety to the die cast collection, and that's always nice. Um, this seemed to be the most popular car at Target. There was only one on the shelves versus about two of every other one. So either Danica's popular in my area or they're short packing the car. Not sure. Uh, let me know in the comments what uh, your cars, are, which cars you are uh, having trouble finding because uh, it seems to vary store to store. But uh, this was the one that seemed to be the hardest to find, at least in my store where I found them. Here's your... Uh, your signboard, fairly straightforward, though it does have that like background pattern um, that seems to be like, oh look, we're a, we're a cooking place. If it would focus, there we go. Um, that kind of gives me a wallpaper vibe, kind of like uh, I don't know, mom's kitchen or something. I have no idea. Uh, coming up with some sort of a uh, something smart to say, and I couldn't think of something. So there you go. Let's take a close look at this car, especially because it's a brand new car. Um, energy for life's great journeys. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a comment on that one. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. So, uh, yeah, the, definitely. So you've got the, like, the pattern that we saw on the, uh, on the back of the, uh, signboard there, um, which is kind of, it's not just a plain white scheme here, stripe across the center, or down here, it just looks like that has that pattern too. Yes, it does. But yeah, um, I think this is a pretty good die cast. I know some people aren't the uh, the biggest fans of Danica in the world. Um, that's not my fault that you aren't, but uh, you know, you never know. 
Uh, Nature's Bakery. Um, has anyone ever had Nature's Bakery? Does anyone know what this is? Um, or is it another Ponzi scheme like Michael Baker? Um, that's also a very big possibility. Um, you know, Danica has a lot of mafia connections, surely. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the Nature's Bakery car. Not a whole lot to say because Lionel knocked it out of the park. They did a really great job on this car. Um, but it'll be interesting to see who's picking it up and who is not. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely a good die cast. I would suggest picking it up. It would have been one of the ones that I would have picked up personally uh, if I didn't all buy all the die casts already. So let's take a look at the next car in the wave. And continuing again with the theme of cars that crashed at Daytona, we've got Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Nationwide 2016 car. Sorry, Junior Nation, I will probably get slain in the comments for that, and it's probably deservedly so. This is his brand new 2016 scheme, so naturally this is probably going to be one of the highest selling diecasts of the year, both in the Gold Series and in the NASCAR Authentics. Everybody going after Dale Jr. Um, and uh, because he's the most popular driver in the sport. Um, that goes for the sport, as in like auto racing. Um, I mean, possibly Lewis Hamilton in Formula One is just as popular as Dale Jr. But uh, that's probably his only rival at this point. There's your signboard. And let's get out the die cast. Here we go. The brand new nationwide scheme for 2016. A lot of people are going to be excited for this one. Let's take a closer look. So here is the 2016 Dale Jr. Nationwide scheme. Obviously, everybody's going to be looking for this car, um, at least the Junior Nation people and the people who just want a front-running car that uh, uh, is going to be up at the front of a lot of races. Um, my friend Buddy told me that this is a tribute scheme to Buddy Baker, the late, great Buddy Baker, um, something that Dale Jr. Uh, Dale Jr. apparently designs, or at least has a hand in designing most of his schemes uh, throughout the year or so, and obviously when your command is high of a paycheck, as Dale Jr., you can uh, write so, uh, sort of things like that into your contract. Um, so he went with this scheme. Uh, I can't remember exactly which car this is representing. I'm sure somebody in the comments will know and let me know. Um, but I think it was an older car, older scheme for Buddy Baker. Um, but it's interesting to see. I think uh, this paint scheme has grown on me more. I didn't like it when it first came out. I wasn't so sh hot on the silver on the side. I kind of liked last year's paint scheme where it was just this uh, metal flake blue. But, uh, you know, things change and they've got merchandise to sell. So I don't have, you know, I can't fault them for changing the scheme every year because everybody goes out and buys a new die cast, don't they? Um, <laughs> so let's take a look at the... Uh, at the signboard here, you've got Nationwide and Dale Earnhardt Jr. That not that the DEI font? I'm pretty sure that's the DEI font. Uh, somebody will have to let me know, but that, that is striking a nostalgic chord there. Um, of course, DEI is gone, so uh, I guess there's no copyright problems. Who knows? Let's take a closer look at uh, the Nationwide 88. Um, so yeah, definitely this um, blue here is very similar. Oh, do we have a paint chip? I think we've got a paint chip on the roof there, if it ever focus, and it does. Uh, I can't tell if that's a paint chip. Yeah, I think it is. Um, but yeah, I was going to talk about the blue. Uh, so you got the Metal Flake blue from last year, or at least similar to last year's car. Um, and then you've got uh, kind of a flat, um, not quite matte, but very flat silver on the side here. Uh, Exalta moved over to Dale Jr from Jeff Gordon last year. They decided not to continue the sponsorship of the 24 and moved to the 88. Um, there's that black bumper, like I mentioned in the Superman review, or the Batman Superman review. This car was Batman in the Batman Superman review. Uh, that black bumper is because of uh, Dale Jr.'s uh, races with his dad in the Corvette. The Corvettes always have, uh, and I think they still do, have black bumpers in sports cars. So that's why that is uh, for you aficionados of the history of the sport. I don't think I talked about um, uh, the splitter on Danica's car. Uh, it's blue. This one's blue too. <laughs> so uh, yeah, here's, Dan here's Danica. Here's Dale Jr.'s car. Um, so uh, yeah, obviously this is going to be a big one that everybody's going to be interested in picking up. Um, it always sells very well and getting it out early in the year means that uh, it's going to sell an awful lot. 
Though it's going to be interesting to see when with the waves uh, that we're getting here if they repack this car or what. Um, I think they packed this pretty heavily to the case, so I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue of you guys getting it. Um, and also, you know, the Gold Series one is out there, and it has been out there for a couple months. So maybe that'll help stifle the demand for this car. But obviously, pretty good. I am uh, definitely a fan of the paint scheme. Uh, Lionel did a pretty good job, except for that little chip there. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. And uh, it's good to get a new 2016 Dale Jr., because Lord knows we're not gonna get, uh, we're not gonna have any shortage of Dale Jr. We've still got consistently one Dale Jr. car per wave, and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. But the next car is a driver that I'm very happy to get. We're gonna be taking a look at that right now. So the only non 2016 car in the wave is probably the one that I am the most excited to get in Lionel's NASCAR Authentics for several reasons. Number one, it's a Kyle Busch car. Number two, it's an M&M's car. Number three, it's a Toyota. Lot of good stuff and it helps that it's bright green. Yes, this is Kyle Busch's crispy M&M's car from 2015. Of course, everybody knows uh, that this car won the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Championship. Uh, and I know there's probably going to be a comments war about that, so go ahead and let me know what you think of Kyle Busch's championship and how he earned it. Uh, that was a big controversy. Another interesting note here, this is uh, completely different from the other NASCAR Authentics boxes because of this that says, For the Adult Collector. Now, I know there's a lot of children in my audience, a lot of uh, kids, a lot of guys under the 18 bracket that is um, considered adult. Why is that, you may ask? Well, my friend Jay Logano 22 let me know on Twitter after we did some sleuthing, and he actually asked Lionel straight up on Twitter. They let him know the reason for the adult collector is because of M&M's. Yes, M&M's requires that to be on diecast. Why? I have no idea. Perhaps it's to cover their butt because they don't want to be seen as uh, advertising M&M's to children. Um, I'm not sure why that is. But yes, we've got the waveboard down here on our little uh, NASCAR 15 uh, thing there. So we do, there is a wave 4 thing on there, um, but where Wave 4 usually is, is been replaced by the Adult Collector. Now what that brings up is an interesting point. The fact that we have this, and they have the card art ready to, ready to go, makes me wonder if we may get beer cars in the future. That may be a bit of a stretch, I'm a, I, uh, I understand, but you never know. Um, I'm hoping we do. Um, even if they come on a base, you know, if we do end up getting uh, them, that would be cool. But uh, let's take a look at the back here and something I noticed, no like official Toyota thing, uh, just GM. So I guess Toyota doesn't require their uh, license to be uh, adorned on the back of their own die casts. But uh, regardless, let's take a look at it because this is one of the most exciting ones, uh, at least for NASCAR Authentics, that we've gotten in a while. The Spin Master didn't even want to produce Kyle Busch cars. So there's your hood magnet. And here is the champ, Kyle Busch. Let's take a closer look at it. So here's Kyle's crispy car out of its box, the M&M's Toyota. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic to see this car in NASCAR Authentic, Spinmaster, or Lionel. We got one in the past, uh, what, four years in the retail line, and that was in a two-pack, um, the Memorable Moments two-pack, that barely got out to anybody. Um, I had to have my friend find one for me and send it to me. Uh, so obviously this is welcome at least for me as a longtime NASCAR Authentics collector that uh, we've gotten a Kyle Busch in the line. I mean obviously this was a car that absolutely needed to be here because of the fact that he's the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion. So a couple reasons it makes me go yes 
I'm glad that Nat, uh, that Kyle Busch is the champion because it means we get uh, some Toyota die cast in NASCAR Authentics because I was so worried that they were just going to skip over Toyota. Toyota has been uh, severely underrepresented uh, under in uh, recent NASCAR die cast. So uh, it's great to see this manufacturer represented and I'm hoping we get more down the line. So here's your big old hood magnet. Um, it seems like I'm going to make a prediction now that we're going to see these probably for all the 2016 cars and then any kind of like specialty 2015 cars we get um, will have either like a trading card or like a specialty large magnet. That seems to be the route that uh, Lionel's going down but again we'll have to see as the future continues. So let's take a closer look at this car. Obviously this is on the EL mold. I think the first one they released was actually on the um, PTC mold. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, here you go, EL, just so everybody is aware of that. Difference between a EL mold and a PTC mold car is the wheels. Um, they don't have like a big goofy looking tire thing. Uh, they have much more nice looking and realistic looking small wheels. But yeah, um, so for you guys who have not seen a Toyota uh, Gen 6 car up close from Lionel or uh, NASCAR Authentics in a while, I'll go kind of slowly over this car. Um, but yeah, definitely very, very nice. Um, definitely a good color, a good color choice, even though I don't think the crispy car is running at all this year. If you'd please, please focus, I'd appreciate it. I don't know why it's having trouble focusing on the back of that car, but uh, yeah, um, but yeah, obviously um, M&M's longtime sponsor of just NASCAR in general. Uh, they started with I think Ernie Irvin and uh, moved on from that. Um, I think Ken Schrader may have driven the M&M's car at one point. Definitely Elliot Sadler did, and then uh, Kyle Busch uh, eventually took it over. But yeah, very nice scheme. Uh, awesome to see an EL mold Toyota and I think this is the only way you're going to get this car on the EL mold so uh, obviously the gold series people are going to be going after this as well. It's not the first EL mold Toyota we've gotten though or at least uh, that has been produced uh, and not even the first one I've bought. I got this Matt Du De Benedetto. I was going to make a joke but then people are going to yell at me in the comments but yeah Matt De Benedetto um, this was a uh, pretty surprising die cast that we saw get made but a uh, as a big fan of the back of the field guys or the small teams, uh, I definitely had to pick this one up. So, uh, yeah, again, just to point out the differences, you've got a black interior versus a white interior. That's the difference between Gold Series and NASCAR Authentics. Uh, that doesn't bother me, but some people are like, well, I don't want to buy it because it's got a white interior. Meh, whatever. Not a big deal. But I figured I'd show off Matt Benedetto's car because uh, some people may not have it or may not know that it exists. Who knows? But yeah, definitely a big time thumbs up for me on this one. I think uh, Lionel knocked it out of the park. Fantastic to get a Toyota. Fantastic to get a Kyle Busch car. Fantastic to get, fantastic to get a Joe Gibbs car. And it's great to get the uh, NASCAR championship car. So in all, uh, pretty good. Highly recommended. Now let's move on to probably the most anticipated die cast of the whole year. And it's not a Dale Jr. car for once. Crazy, I know. So, the final car in Wave 4 and capping off our collection of cars that crashed in the 2016 Daytona 500, we've got Chase Elliott's 24 Napa Auto Parts car. This is the driver who took over for Jeff Gordon, and obviously a lot of people very high on Chase Elliott. Um, they've got Chase Fever, obviously. Uh, they really, really, a lot of hype around. Chase Elliott. Uh, we'll see if it pays off throughout the season. Obviously he's been running up front but has been a bit accident prone. Um, so we'll see if that improves throughout the season. It'll be interesting to see uh, how he improves. Obviously there's a lot of young talent in NASCAR. I will give NASCAR a lot of credit. Um, they are developing young talent and filling the shoes of guys like Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart who are exiting the scene. So let's take a look at this car. Obviously a lot of people are going to be into it. Uh, so there's your magnet, and here it is, the 2016, I almost said Jeff Gordon, 
<laughs> of course, Chase Elliott. That's going to take some time to get used to. Yes, the 24 Chase Elliott Napa car. So here it is out of its box, Chase Elliott's 2016 car. Uh, I wasn't entirely sold on this paint scheme when they first revealed it. Um, I'm of the opinion that Napa cars need to have a little bit more yellow on them. Uh, and this one doesn't have a whole lot of yellow to begin with. They've got this um, blue striping that I'm not... Uh, I don't really know where that came from. I don't really know where they're going with it. Um, don't know why it's there. Um, is that some sort of tribute? Uh, I heard nothing about um, it being some sort of a tribute or something. Um, but it's possible, but I don't know of any Bill Elliott cars or any 24 cars that really had that kind of striping. Maybe they're just going for some kind of an iconic look. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. Um, it's not the best Napa scheme, certainly. Um, I mean, there's such a high standard for Napa schemes um, that I guess they just decided they weren't going to try to make an iconic Napa scheme. I mean, maybe if this car ends up in victory lane a couple more times, uh, or a couple times to begin with, um, maybe there will be more of a uh, fan base around this paint scheme. But um, as of right now, I'm not sold on the uh, decision to go with like light blue and red, or uh, like bright red, it's almost pink. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. But here's the uh, here's a little pit board sign. I think this is pretty good. It's probably my second favorite behind the Tony Stewart one. I think the colors actually work better on the pit board than they do on the car, but <laughs> whatever. So let's take a closer look at the Chase Elliott car. Um, yeah, you do get this kind of bright uh, red splitter, or nearly pink splitter, uh, depending on what kind of lighting you look in. Yes, there is a chip on there. kind of wish I would have caught that when I bought it in the store, but oh well. Um, that's what you get for not being very discerning and just going, <gasps> Wave 4! Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I want to point out, there's, I said this in the, NAS, uh, the Batman vs. Superman review, and nobody answered me. Why are there no contingencies this year? There's like virtually none. Is that just because Brian France is money hungry and he's like, oh, you gotta pay more to be a contingency? I don't know. But yeah, oh look, the camera, I wish you guys could see that. The camera is focusing on the paint chip. It's like got a circle around it. Yes, I understand that there's a paint chip camera. You can stop telling me that there's one. Yeah, so here's a closer look at the scheme. Obviously, I think a lot of people are going to be going after this. I mean, uh, Chase Elliott has got an insane amount of hype around him. Just so many people, like on Instagram, Twitter, uh, talking about how great Chase is. And believe me, I see all the profile pictures on Instagram. Everybody's got their uh, profile picture set to Chase Elliott. Uh, still a Kyle Larson fan here. Um, I think Kyle Larson is probably the most talented out of all of them because... Uh, He's driving that Ganassi car, and boy, that's not a very good car. Is that another paint chip? I can't tell if that's a restricted logo or a paint chip. Uh, probably come up better on the uh, HD uh, footage on YouTube than it will on my little camera viewfinder. But uh, I definitely think this is going to be one of the highest selling die casts of this year both in the Gold Series and for NASCAR Authentics. Uh, I think just everybody's going to be after this one. Uh, it, you know, I will admit, this kind of like, you know what, I'm going to call this what it is. It's an 80s, it's like an 80s thing. It kind of looks like, almost like a guitar, or like, uh, like, a uh, something you'd see in like a Madonna video. I don't know. It's, it's like a, like, I don't know, it's like 80s. I don't know what they're going for here. Uh, but it is growing on me as I'm holding this die cast in the, in my hands. But I just don't know, why didn't you go with a yellow stripe? That would have improved it so much. Whatever. Um, this is something I wanted to show you guys, just, just as an example, um, and as a Chase Elliott car that we've gotten in NASCAR Authentics this year. Um, yeah, see, here's a much more yellow and blue Napa scheme, and I think that's a little bit better. It's the Darlington throwback car. It's the other Chase Elliott car we've gotten thus far in NASCAR Authentics uh, from Line L. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about uh, the uh, Napa scheme this year. Uh, it'll be an interesting discussion, that's for sure. I, I have no doubts about that. But yeah, there is the. Uh, we got this car in, uh, I believe it was Wave 3. Three? No, it was wave two. Wave two of 2016. I almost said wave three, but then I was like, no, wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. But yeah, here is the Napa Auto Parts car for Chase Elliott. Obviously, a lot of people going to be going after that. Yes, there's hair. Why is there hair on Chase? Get off of there, you hair. But yeah, 
Um, I think a lot of people are going to be going after this one, but again, let me know in the comments. I always love hearing what cars you guys are actually interested in because you are the viewers, and ultimately, you are the guys are going to be the ones who buy way more diecast than I do, even though I buy a lot of diecast. So let's go in for a close up of the whole wave, and I'm going to tell you some information regarding how to know when the next waves are coming out. That's important information, and I hope you guys will stick around for it. So I get a lot of comments on social media when waves are coming out and I usually don't have an answer because first of all I don't have like any communication with the people who uh, like regular communication with the people who produce the die cast and uh, when Spin Master was running it it was such a crap shoot that no one really had a good idea of when stuff was coming out. With Lionel taking over we now have a pretty good idea of when stuff is coming out. So usually around the 10th of the month, so next month, April 10th, around that date, we're going to be seeing the reveal of Wave 5 of NASCAR Authentics. This has been happening the last few months. Now it's such a, it, such is the pattern that I'm willing to report this as fact. So on the 10th of the month, we're around 10th of April, we will see Wave 5 of NASCAR Authentics revealed. We'll know what's in it. Usually around 10 days later, around the 20th, Start checking your Target stores. That's where NASCAR Authentics usually hit first. Those people were starting to tell me that they're starting to hit at Meyer stores as well. So if you have a Meyer store or a Target store, the 20th of the month is where you're going to want to be around that date. Usually around a Friday or a Monday, that seems to be when those stores stock. Um, but uh, any day will do. But check those stores then. That's usually when the waves hit. Right now, Walmart is inconsistent. They're usually about uh, two to three weeks behind Target and now apparently Meyer when getting waves. So if you're checking Walmarts for brand new waves of NASCAR Authentics, you're not going to find them. You have to check your Target stores or your Meyer stores. So there's just a little bit of info for you guys, the 10th of the month is when you start to see the wave revealed, but that doesn't mean they're out yet. You have to wait about 10 days, then they start hitting stores. So hopefully that will help you guys uh, in finding NASCAR Authentics. That seems to be what the pattern is. So uh, without any um, more info there, uh, tell me in the comments what you thought of the wave. I think this is probably a pretty great wave um, because, of course, it fixed all the problems I was complaining about. We got 2016 cars. We got a Toyota. So I'm pretty happy with this. I hope they continue this trend, though I'm expecting the next wave will probably just be Darlington throwback cars and Dale Jr. cars, <laughs> you know, because of course it will be. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video as you always do. Drop a like, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video.